Hi everybody. Today we will revise the acid base salt chapter by some question answer. And these questions are very important for your exam also. First question here it is written that lime juice has sour taste, but lime water is slightly bitter. Why? Lime juice has sour taste because it contains acid. That acid is called citric acid. We know that all organic acids are edible and if we take the taste, generally acids are sour in taste. That is why that lime juice has sour taste. But lime water, if we think about the lime water, lime water is nothing but a base that is calcium hydroxide. All of you know that generally bases are slightly bitter in taste. So that is why lime water is slightly bitter. So here first I am writing the structure of citric acid. Citric acid. Citric acid is a tricarboxylic acid. CH2, CWH, COH, C double H and CH2 C double H. This is citric acid. Now if we think about the lime water, lime water is calcium hydroxide. So you can easily understand this one is a tricarboxylic acid and this one is a base. So it will it is sour in taste and it is bitter in taste. So next question will discuss. Our next question is question number two the heat of neutralization reaction of strong acid with strong base of strong acid with strong base is always same why we know that neutralization is a reaction where acid reacts with base forming salt and water now during the neutralization reaction of strong acid and strong base why the heat of neutralization uh, that means that value heat of neutralization value is always same that is 57.1 kilojoule per mole why it is happening if we take nitric acid and if we add sodium hydroxide then there will be formation of NaNO3 salt plus H2 if we take hydrochloric acid plus if we add NaOH, there also it will form NaCl plus water. If we take sulfuric acid and if we give the NaOH, twice NaOH will react here, forming sodium sulfate plus twice H2. So in all case, the heat of neutralization is the same reaction. That is nothing but both uh, from this all reaction H plus is combining with OH minus and forming H2. That is why the reaction is same. Whatever acid we are taking here, it may be sulfuric acid, it may be nitric acid or HCl. If we take one equivalent H plus, that will react with one equivalent of OH minus and will form water. And here the heat of replacement value is same, that is 57.1 kilojoule per mole. That is why the heat of neutralization reaction for strong acid and strong base is always same. Hope you can understand. So next we will go to the question number 3. In question number 3 it is given that why aqueous solution of NaCl? Why aqueous solution 
of NaCl is neutral but NH4Cl is acidic. So we have already discussed that why NaCl solution, aqua solution is neutral because NaCl is forming from a strong acid HCl and a strong base NaOH. So here in the solution, if we have, that means if we in NaCl if we add water, it is not easily hydrolyzed. So there is no hydrolysis reaction here also. And otherwise, if we think in the solution, the concentration of H plus and OH minus are almost same or equal that is why it is the, the solution is neutral so the aqueous solution of sodium chloride is neutral so here we know that NaCl if we add water there will be no hydrolysis reaction no reaction actually this NaCl is forming from the strong base NaOH and strong acid HCl So that is why, so there will be no hydrolysis reaction and concentration of H plus and OH minus is same here. So the solution is neutral or pH will be 7. But in case of ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride is a salt which is formed from the reaction of a strong acid HCl and a weak base ammonium hydroxide. So ammonium chloride, if we add water, then it will be forming NH4OH plus HCl. So as in the solution concentration of H plus is greater than the concentration of OH minus ion. So the nature of the solution will be acidic. Hope you can understand that is why the aqueous solution of sodium chloride is neutral but ammonium chloride is acidic in nature. Next question number 4, question number 4 is given that why a universal indicator is more meaningful, why a universal indicator is more meaningful than ordinary indicator. We know that universal indicator is an indicator where mixture of dyes are present. And in case of universal indicator, we can tell whether the solution is acidic or basic. As well as we can predict the strength, approximately strength of the solution. So, if we have universal indicator, if we check one acidic solution, we can approximately tell the pH of the solution. From the pH value, we can easily compare the different types of solution strength, whether in case of acid, whether it will be strong acid or weak acid, or in case of base, it will be strong base or weak base. But if we think about ordinary indicator like litmus, methyl orange, phenolphthalein, and this indicator will only can indicate the solution nature, whether it will be acidic or basic, but it cannot tell about the pH or the strength of the solution. So that is why in universal indicator is more meaningful compared to the ordinary indicator. Question number 5. Question number 5 is given why H2CO3 can form two types of salt? Why H2CO3 can form two types of salt? So all of you know that H2CO3 is nothing but carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a dibasic acid. It contains two replaceable hydrogen atom. 
So if we replace one hydrogen atom, then it can form acid salt. But if we replace the two hydrogen atom, then it will form a normal salt. So that is why forming a carbonic acid can form two type of salt. And one thing we have to remember that carbonic acid is not stable in aqueous solution. Generally, if we pass carbon dioxide in water at high pressure and low temperature, carbonic acid is formed. Carbonic acid in solid state it is stable, but whenever water is present, that means in aqueous solution it is not at all stable and it will be stable at very low temperature and high pressure. Now here I am drawing the structure of carbonic, carbonic acid. This is the structure of carbonic acid. And it is a dibasic acid. Now if we add sodium hydroxide one mole, then first it will form sodium bicarbonate. So this sodium bicarbonate is acid salt. And here if we add 2 mole of sodium bicarbonate for 1 mole of carbonic acid, then it will form sodium carbonate salt. Plus twice H2. Now this is a normal salt. Now why it is acid salt? Because in this salt there is one replaceable hydrogen or this acid is partially replaced by base but in case of uh, sodium carbonate there is no replaceable hydrogen or it is the completely neutralized or completely replaced hydrogens. Okay. So that is why this is called normal salt and we can understand from this uh, discussion we can easily understand why H2CO3 can form two type of salts. Next question number 6. Question number 6 is given that H3PO2 forms one type of salt. H3PO2 form one type of salt. H3PO3 form two type of salt. H3PO4 forms forms three type of salts. Explain. This is question number six. Now here you have to know the structure, then you can easily understand. In case of H3PO2, the structure is like this. And the name of this compound is hypophosphorus acid. So as here only one replaceable hydrogen atom, so if we add sodium hydroxide, then there is formation of only one salt, that is normal salt. NaH2PO2. This is a normal salt. But if we think about H3PO3, in case of H3PO3, here two replaceable hydrogen atoms are present. So, if we add NaOH, there will be formation of two type of salt. One will be NaH2PO3 Another will be Na2HPO3. So, this one is acid salt and this one is normal salt. So, in case of Phosphorus acid, it can form two type of salt because two replaceable hydrogen atom is present. One salt that is acid salt will form by partial replacement of hydrogen and the normal salt will form by complete replacement of hydrogen. And the last one 
is phosphoric acid phosphoric acid structure is P double bond O so in phosphoric acid there are three replaceable hydrogen atoms so it can form C salt because when it will react with NaOH first it will form two type of acid salt one will be NaH2PO4 next one is Na2HPO4 and third one is Na3PO4 so in case of NaH2PO4 only one hydrogen is replaced by base NaOH so that is why it is acid salt both these are acid salt and this one is normal salt but in case of Na2HPO4 two hydrogen replaced still one is left so that is why it is also acid salt but in case of Na3PO4 all hydrogens are replaced that is why it is called normal salt so from here we can easily understand why H3PO2 forms one type of salt H3PO3 forms two types of salts but H3PO3 forms three types of salt next we discuss question number 7 In case of question number 7, it is given that how will you prepare lead chloride from lead carbonate? How will you prepare lead chloride from lead carbonate? So, here you have to understand one thing that lead carbonate is insoluble. So first we have to add nitric acid solution to lead carbonate and that will form lead nitrate solution PbNO3 whole twice plus there will be formation of carbon dioxide gas and water. Then this lead nitrate PbNO3 whole twice if we add sodium chloride solution that will form lead chloride plus NaNO3 twice NaCl twice NaNO3 so in this way we can prepare lead chloride here one thing we have to keep in mind that lead chloride is insoluble in cold water but if we apply heat in hot water it is soluble so in this way we can easily prepare lead chloride from lead carbonate. Next question number 8. How will you prepare zinc carbonate from zinc? How we so here zinc is a metal. So you have to prepare zinc carbonate and zinc carbonate is insoluble in water so first we have to convert zinc into corresponding water soluble salt so if we add zinc plus dilute H2SO4 that will produce zinc sulfate plus H2 now this zinc sulfate if we add sodium carbonate solution that will produce zinc carbonate plus Na2SO4 so there will be precipitation of zinc carbonate and if we filter then sodium carbonate will be in the solution and we can easily separate the zinc carbonate ok so in this way we can easily prepare zinc carbonate next question question number 9 When a metallic oxide is dissolved in water, what will be the pH of the solution? When a metallic oxide 
is dissolved in water what will be the ph of the solution all of we know that metallic oxides are basic in nature so if we dissolve in water definitely it will produce base and ph of the solution will be greater than 7 if we think one example then we can easily understand if we take magnesium oxide which is a metallic oxide if we add water then there will be formation of magnesium hydroxide so magnesium hydroxide is a base or we can tell it alkali okay um, that is uh, water soluble base okay so now the if we uh, check the pH of the solution definitely uh, the pH will be greater than 7 but if we think about non-metallic oxide what will happen this is not given in the question in case of non-metallic oxide if you dissolve in water that will generally produce acid we can think about any non-metallic oxide like sulfur dioxide if we dissolve in water that will produce sulfurous acid now sulfurous acid is an acid so definitely the pH of the solution will be less than 7 as it is acidic in nature so hope you can understand so the last question we will discuss today question number 10 how do you increase the pH of a solution how will you increase or decrease the pH of a solution we know the pH scale from 0 to 6.9 it is acidic and at 7 it is neutral and from 7.1 to 14 it is basic so this scale is generally prepared at the temperature 25 degree centigrade now here in the question how do you increase or decrease the pH of a solution so if we want to increase any type of solution if we take water then if we add acid it pH will decrease but if we add base or alkali generally pH will increase or any type of solution it may be acidic solution if we add base definitely it pH will increase but any kind of solution if we suppose it is a basic solution also if we add acid pH will decrease so what will be the answer of your question how you increase or decrease the pH of a solution so to increase the pH of a solution we have to add basic solution or alkaline solution into the particular that solution but if you want to decrease the pH of a solution we have to use acid so in this way we have completed the revision of this acid based salt chapter hope all of you can understand if you have any problem you can contact me through my email address or you can call me by phone Okay, so today up to this, thank you very much.